Good morning. Welcome back to the Retirement Report. I'm Hank Parrott, your host. All right, we've been talking about the different stages of retirement from pre-retirement to early retirement years. Now we're gonna be talking about those middle to late retirement years. So this is one of those areas when you're looking at later retirement years, say from your uh, mid 70s up, this is part of that planning too. And I would even say it could even be in the early, you know, like age 70 up that we wanna talk about things like, you know, what, what your lifestyle is gonna look like. Are you still gonna be out there, you know, being very, very active? Are you gonna spend maybe more time at home. So let's take a look at that. What are the kind of challenges when it comes to those later retirement years and your planning that you need to, to pay attention to? If you, in fact, you are uh, spending more time spent closer to home and maybe you're looking, you know, this is another area that I get uh, probably, gosh, I'm, it, quite often, and that's about getting our homes when now that we're retired and we have more time that may be another maybe we're taking on some home projects maybe it's about some renovations you know we're thinking or maybe we're you know do we want to downsize into a different house or maybe even do we want to go out and say hey i don't want to really move but i'm gonna i really like to redo that kitchen or the bathroom or whatever it might be Maybe I'm going to add that sun porch or a screen porch or, again, these kinds of uh, uh, projects around the house is another one that's quite common when people retire. you got a little time now to devote to that project. You want to make sure you have the resources, the money available to do it as well. And this is, so whether you're very active or maybe you're active around your house, you know, maybe there's things that you really enjoy, whether it's gardening or maybe you have a pool or, you know, whatever it is, the time that you're there, you also want to maximize as well and get the most enjoyment from. So when it comes to uh, this part of it, whether it's spending more time close to home, whether you're doing that in your early retirement years or later on, having that house uh, put together the way you want is another uh, great way to, and having a plan, you know, having the money saying, okay, I need 20,000 for this project, or I need, you know, 30,000 for a new car, or I need 50,000 for this project, or maybe I'm gonna go, you know, get that vacation home and I need to, you know, I need some money for that and what that's gonna look like, or I'm gonna sell my house and get this other home over in this area I've always wanted. All of it is about having a plan, where the money's going to come from, and where the smartest way to take it. You know, I've had uh, another common question that I get all the time, uh, day in, day out, is that about where to pull money from to pay for certain things. Should I pay $100,000, you know, down on a, um, a, or to pay off a mortgage, for instance, or should I pull that out of my retirement accounts? Usually that's going to mean a lot more taxes getting paid. You could pay double or even triple the amount of tax by not having a good plan for how to accomplish those kind of goals. You can get there. You can pay off that mortgage or, or whatever it is or this big ticket item. There are ways to get there and still minimize taxes in the process, but you gotta have a plan. You gotta think it through and understand how the tax code works and just chunking out 100 grand or 200,000 out of a retirement account is gonna bump you up considerably in terms of your tax brackets and all of a sudden you're paying two to three times more tax where if we just chunk that, we just broke that down into more bite-sized pieces, so to speak, where if we just pay off a little Little bit this year and next year and maybe we spread that out over a two three four five year period we cut the taxes in half or maybe even less all right so having a plan for that is so important you know this is a time also as we get the older we get typically health challenges can start to surface more that's where we you know need to have planning in place for that and what that looks like what limitations it might mean or how to make sure we're getting the best quality care that we can and still able to maintain that activity you know that active lifestyle that we desire Planning for legacy, the estate planning piece. You know, in my book, Seven Steps to Financial Freedom in, in uh, Retirement, Chapter 7 is all about estate planning, whether that's gifts to charities or loved ones or just making sure. Maybe you want to set up a college savings account for the grandkids. Maybe you want to, you know, take a, a big family vacation where you're able to just take everybody with you, you know, and do some really special trip. I've had a number of clients do that, whether cruises or just special destinations where they took everybody and paid the whole thing and just how good that made them feel and what a tremendous memory that would be for them. Um, about inflation, understanding how that works uh, on your savings or the ways to boost your retirement income to make sure, right, that income needs to increase over your lifetime to maintain your standard of living. That's the only way it's going to work because of inflation. You know, inflation is a silent killer of your finances. You've got to have a plan for it. 
ways that you, uh, to leave something for your loved ones and groups that you support, and then again, long-term care issues, and then how, understanding how inflation affects you is a big one. All right, so here's one of the, again, for the first 10 callers, I'm gonna get this out there again one last time here probably. For the first 10 callers to my office, 615-376-5325, would you like to have this all put together for you? Would you like to see all these different things we've been talking about addressed and the different strategies that can be employed? If you need some help with that, 615-376-5325, I will do a comprehensive financial plan at no cost. Now, over the years, I've charged anywhere from $500 to $5,000 for these kind of plans, all right, depending on the complexity of the plan and what we get into. What I'm doing for you then is at no charge, all right, a comprehensive financial plan. It's not just a free consultation. We may meet two or three times, in fact, to get this plan in place for you, but I'm, gonna, I'm going to invest in you in that manner. And, what I, and what's the goal? Well, you know, maybe we have a good fit. Maybe you become a client and it works out for everyone but there's no obligation. I'm gonna do a comprehensive plan. I'll show you basically your financial future based on what your income is, what your expenses are, what your assets are, what your liabilities are. We're gonna take into account inflation. We're gonna factor that in. We're gonna we get factor in 3%. You can see how much your expenses will go up 10 years from now. If you need 100,000 to live on, you're gonna see that you'll need about 135 to 140 just to pay the same things, just to maintain that same standard of living. So we'll show you that as well. Um, taxes, of course, we're going to show you how ta what you're paying in taxes now, as well as strategies, share strategies with you to minimize, to reduce those taxes. Rate of return on your money. We'll show you what's the needed rate of return. I can show you exactly how much you need to be making on your money to not only not run out of money, but to be able to have that lifestyle that you desire. So that's all part of this planning, and we deal with all the different things I mentioned, Social Security, Medicare, estate planning, tax planning, the investment analysis, all of that and more as a part of this analysis. So if you'd like to be one of the first 10 callers, just call my office, 615-376-5325, Tess is standing by. She'll get your information. She'll send you out a packet of things to bring to your appointment with me that we can do this planning. When you come in to see me, I'll give you a free copy of my book, Seven Steps to Financial Freedom in Retirement. And I cover over the last 30 years, I cover a lot of case studies and a lot of different, it basically it's pretty easy reading and it walks you through a lot of the things that we talk about and a lot of the planning that we're doing. The first two chapters are all about the planning part. The third chapter, IRA Mastery, is about tax planning and retirement accounts. Chapter four, safe money, gets into things like savings bonds, uh, the CDs, bank accounts, money markets, that kind of thing, uh, fixed annuities, all of the different safe guarantee type things that are out there and how they might work into a different plan for, you know, into your planning. Uh, chapter five is how the smart money invests. We get into, you know, the whole business about uh, 60 years now, of Nobel Prize winning academic research that we're able to utilize to help us invest in the smartest, safest way possible in the market to get the returns we need to stay ahead of inflation and taxes, but also to minimize volatility and risk in our portfolios at the same time. So we'll share how these model portfolios work uh, with you is that in that part and in chapter six long-term care talk about all the different ways that if that's a concern for you that that risk can be managed as well and in chapter seven on estate planning that gets into all the different things the five essential documents that make up a, the foundation of a good estate plan so we talk about the difference between wills and trusts the different types of trusts are out there powers of attorney living wills all of that is covered in chapter seven and when you come in to see me that's a big part of what we cover as well. All right, so key retirements. Now we're going to dive back into our program here, right? Key elements of a retirement income plan. Let's take a look at that. This way, you know, it's the essential uh, expenses versus discretionary. As I like to say, these are your, you know, your lifestyle expenses that have to do with the, the uh, necessities that you're dealing with all the time, you know, like home expenses and utilities and food and, you know, all of that, insurance costs and maybe tithing to your church or 
um, charitable, other charitable giving, gifts for the holidays and birthday gifts. So we look at things not just that you see, you know, each and every week or each and every month, but things that you maybe just, you know, have to pay out, you know, once or twice a year. Property taxes is an example, property, home insurance, auto insurance, all of that is covered in your essential expenses. And then we get into the fun part, right? The discretionary, or to me, what I like to call fun money. This is where for travel and, you know, maybe, you know, wouldn't it be nice to be able to give more or to help people uh, and put that into your planning? You know, I have a number of clients that do that and it makes, you know, it's a great feeling to be able to help people because of how well you've done. Uh, that's the part that we cover as well. So one of those, when you get into planning for your essential uh, income needs, we look at things like recurring monthly expenses, housing costs, utilities, transportation, your food and household goods, health care, right? Potentially long-term care, uh, debt payments, whatever that is. These are your essential things. Now, ideally, we want to get you out of debt. All right, so this is one, especially by the time you retire. I have a few clients that come in and maybe they've got a mortgage and we, we're weighing, do we want to pay that off or not? Okay, but ideally you're, you're debt free completely by the time you hit retirement. And if not, we're going to talk about how to, in fact, get you there quickly. So, all right, another break. When we come back, I'm going to finish up here on this, uh, on talking about basically what I was just uh, touching on a little bit. What do you do if you do have debt going into retirement? What can you do with that? And understanding sometimes with properties or investments like rental properties that maybe you're carrying a little bit of debt, but your, your net income off of that makes it worthwhile. We'll talk about you know, how to do that, how to factor that into your planning as well. But first to break, join me here. We'll be right back on a retirement report. <music> 